Hello guys, it's been a while. Um, thank you so much for joining me on another Road to TCG Worlds 2019. You know, it's been almost a week since my last uploaded video to a channel. It's been super busy. Um, these few months are super busy with travel. And then I'm doing a lot of coaching as well. So that's got me very busy. And then just like life in general. I could be doing a lot of videos, but I also could be doing things in real life, like playing soccer, hanging out with my girlfriend, seeing family, um, doing stuff, you know? So that's why there was a small hiatus on the channel. I hope that I'll be able to bring you guys um, daily videos this week, um, starting with this one, where I will be taking a look at the finalist decks, you know, the second place and first place, decks of two big events that happened um, not this weekend but the weekend before when i won el salvador there were two other events happening one in italy and one in uh, brazil so i'm going to be taking a look at the decks that did well there and hopefully um you guys will enjoy the explanations and then the following days we will see those decks in action so the first one is by pedro torres huge congratulations to him uh pretty funny that today he was using my deck on stream um, and today we're gonna be talking about his deck and probably featuring it tomorrow it's the pure Zapdos Jolteon deck it's a very straightforward lightning type um, deck that uh, becomes very efficient in terms of attacking because it features obviously all this lightning Pokemon it doesn't feature Picarum but um, it features all the other good lightning Pokemon like Zapdos, Jolteon, Coco and Serora and basically we have um, sorry, wrong click. We have Zapdos, which is a really good attacker. I think Zapdos is probably the most um, threatening Pokemon in the format right now. With 110 HP, its attack thunders, assault deals 10 damage, and this attack does 70 more if Zapdos was on the bench. This turn, you do not apply weakness, so you cannot hit Zapdos for weakness, opposing Zapdos for weakness. But um, 8 damage for 1 energy is a lot, switching around doesn't really hurt you, especially when you're getting extra cards off of Jirachi, so promoting Jirachis is really, really nice. And we combine Zapdos with Jolteon GX. 200 HP, it's attack Electro Bullet, does 30 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So essentially, every time you Electro Bullet something on the bench, it's as if you're using an Electro Power, but you're not actually using it. So, for example, in the Zapdos mirror matches, when you use an Electro Power to KO a Zapdos with Electro Bullet and you place 30 somewhere else, it's as if you were using two Electro Powers with one. So it becomes super, super efficient. Your damage output becomes um, really nice. Like, both cards have a lot of synergy. The Free Retreat also helps for Zapdos, of course. And then we have the Head Bolt Attack, which deals 110 damage for two energy. And then Swift Run GX does 110 as well for... Um, the same two energy and you become completely immune during your next turn. So if you need the big hit, you have Head Bolt. If you need the, the damage spread, you have Electro Bullet. Really nice array of attacks. And we have um, Zero Aura GX to give us Free Retreat and also give us a powerful attack in Plasma Fist, dealing 160 damage and Free Retreat with the Thunderclap Zone. And we have Coco GX, of course, with its ability Aura Trail. It can come out of nowhere and then just punish heavily players who abuse energy drops and whatnot. And um, we also have the Sky High Close attack dealing 130 damage, but mainly Tapu Thunder GX punishes players who decide to attach way too many energy in their turn or they have gotten far too ahead, far too, <laughs> too far ahead with their energy attachments and then Tapu Thunder deals 50 damage for each energy attached to all of their Pokemon. So a wide array of lightning type attackers. Tapu Koko Prisms are also a decent attacker with Mac Bolt and um, especially its ability Dance of the Ancients. You choose two Pokemon on your bench, you attach energy to them so you get an extra attachment to two Pokemon at the same time. And then finally we have Jirachi for support Stellar which is probably the best ability in the game right now. Look at the top five cards choose one of them put them into your hand if it's well choose what trainer card put it into your hand when that can be guzmas or volkners or switches or thunder mountains it's like there's so many good trainers in the deck and stellar wish just gets you more and more resources every turn we have absol to stop opposing jirachis with a stark ambition you increase their retreat cost by one so retreating is more difficult and we also have a let loose marshall because we all know how broken let loose is 
four Lily, four Volkner to maximize consistency, one Cynthia and one Ericas for added support, four Guzma to make sure that we are um, attacking the correct Pokemon, four Nespol to search for our basic Pokemon. We only need um, Ultra Bolt essentially to put energy in the discard pile in case we need to use Dance of the Ancients. Ultra Bolt does search for Jolteon, but that's not going to be our main Pokemon we will look for. Um, with Ultra Ball, it's actually going to be Coco GX because its ability Aero Trail only works when played from hand. Um, for Electro Powers to increase our damage output, this is the main reason why the deck honestly really, really works. And uh, because you get all that damage, all that extra stackable damage output, we have two escape ropes, we have three switches to switch around along with the one escape board, two choice bands to also increase our damage output, one Thunder Mountain, one Viridian Forest. 9 basic lightning energy and finally 1 max potion to potentially heal, add damage Jolteon or damage Jirachi or something. Sometimes removing that damage um, from something like Absol or Jirachi will help us in um, taking away a win condition from our opponent. So this is a pure lightning deck that won in Italy. It's super consistent, super fast and has the support of Jirachi which I really really like. Excuse me. <laughs> and so that got first place and it was able to beat Regigigas Stahl slash Mill in the final. Um, Alessandro, who's from Italy, he has a YouTube channel, iCatterpy, in case you want to check it out, had a really cool deck. Um, I'm not particularly fond of um, Mill decks, but this one is super, super interesting and definitely a potentially decent play. Um, for upcoming tournaments, namely Denver, yeah, which is coming up this weekend, you have Reggie Gigas, 180 HP, so really difficult to take down, especially when you have the Ancient Crystal attached to it, which means every Regirock, Regice, Raysteel, or Reggie Gigas this card is attached to takes 30 less time from your opponent's attack. So essentially, you have 210 HP or more, a really high number that is really difficult to hit for things like Zapdos or Jolteon and whatnot. Um, really difficult to hit those numbers. And then you have Hoopa as well. With its abilities control guard, you have protection from Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX. We also have uh, Shuggle GX, which is it with its protective shell um, ability. Uh, any Pokemon that has two or less energy cannot damage Shuggle, which is a really big deal because Zapdos and things like that are super energy efficient decks, but in the end they don't succeed as much as they would want to in... Um, they don't succeed as much as they would want to in being too efficient against things like this. Um, now, this deck does run two double colorless energies and two metal energies. So here's the thing, with Mount Coronet and Plumeria and the metal energies, you essentially get infinite Plumerias, which is really good. And then when you can recycle your stadiums with uh, the Lusamines that you have in your deck. So Shrine of Punishment can eventually finish off an opponent. Mount Lanakila makes it difficult for someone to retreat. Uh, the Wondrous Labyrinth also makes it harder for someone to attack. And you can recycle those these stadiums, and then once you eventually run your opponent out of stadiums, you can drop the Wondrous Labyrinth, making it super, super difficult for them to be able to keep up. Trans Punishment could allow you to win a game where um, you just run your opponent out of cards, um, or rather, you actually get prizes, yeah? And you have another interesting way to get prizes, which is with the cat, well, not, I guess you don't take prizes, but you deny resources rather, which is the counter gain, DC, and then Lugia GX. We're not trying to use Psychic, which deals 30 more damage to the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, though it could be interesting purely based off of the fact that it could be decent against a Pigram that has five or six energy attached. But we're mostly looking at Lost Purge GX, where you put your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it in the Lost Zone. So they lose, like you could lose a Picarom, you could Lost Purge a Jolten GX, which against this deck is not a big deal because you don't have Vileplume, right? Usually you would want the Lugia GX combined with Vileplume to deny them their resources, but um, the counter gain plus Lugia GX plus TC is a really neat play. No Articuno GX is very surprising for me, but we do have the Durant with Mountain Munch, which discards the top two cards from your opponent's deck. So with the DCs, we can do that and we accelerate the discarding process, especially if we trap something in the active. We have Giraffarig 
when it get lost, you put two cards remembrance, discard pile from into the lost zone. So a really nice way to remove resources that they might be looping or energies that they might get back, such as Malamar decks. Really surprised we don't see a uh, resource management or a guru. Honestly, I'm really surprised there's not a copy of that in here or a copy of a known hand. Um, supporters wise, as you can see, you have the triple lose, I mean, which is what makes this deck work because you have infinite supporters resources and you can effectively deny energies with Plumerias, you can trap stuff with Guzma, you can deny special energies and or tool cards and or stadiums with Fava, and you can attack the hand as well with Team Skull Grunt. So you, the main idea is to deny energy. You do have four Steven's Resolve to search for the cards that you do need. You have a Cerola to heal your Pokemon, and then you have three enhanced hammers to make sure that you're removing special energy. No crushing hammers, so no flipping cards here. And um, the only way we can remove basic energy is with Plumeria. I don't think this deck would be very successful in beating Picarum, honestly. It just feels like you don't have enough denial to really slow them down. Um, but you do have like a lot of options. Uh, it does become very annoying to KO even one Reggie Gigas because of the high HP and the Ancient Crystals. Um, four builds analysis also help us in finding the denying um, cards such as the Enhanced Hammers, the Plumerias, the Stevens, the Cerolas, the Max Potions, uh, the Stadiums that we might need. Two Nest Balls help us in um, having extra ways, even though we have exactly 10 basic Pokemon and won't be mulliganing too much, we also don't want to be in a situation where we don't have another Pokemon, and even though we're a mill deck and we're denying our opponent resources, they eventually manage to power one thing up and knock out our one Pokemon, and then we lose that way. Um, I already mentioned the infinite combo with Plumeria, Mount Coronet, and the two metal energy that the deck does run. So you get the two metal energy back with Macronid and then you Plumeria. And that's essentially the infinite loop you want to get to at some point in the game. Double Gladian to make sure that whatever is prized uh, um, that you might need, such as the fourth Rage Gigas or the Lugia for the counter gain Lost Perch GX combo, is definitely not something that affects you or even the Shrine of Punishment or the Mount Coronet that you might need to close out a game or the Durant to accelerate the discard. So yeah. Super interesting deck. I think uh, this deck will be a lot clearer for everyone when I end up using it in um, in a match when we upload that video later on in the week. And so those were the two finalist decks from the special event in Bolzano, Italy. Now moving on to the American continent, we have the champion deck, which was this very unique and very interesting Zoro Rock. Yeah, so we have seen Zorark, it's always been a thing, and it's never been um, it's never been gone. It has been lately more successful when combined with Lucario than its pure version, purely because Lucario is such a really good hard counter to the Picaron card, but um, in Brazil, the champion deck did not utilize Lucario, it went for a more consolidated and uh, consistent approach, and it had the Absol along with the um, Alolan Mock to make sure that it could fully counter all the lightning type decks. So we have Zorak GX with 210 HP, its ability trade, we discard a card and draw two. And then we have the Righteous Beating Attack, which deals 20 damage for each of your Pokemon in play, up to 120 with a full bench, 150 with a choice band. 160 with a choice band and a devour field and 180 with a professor kukui so why is that relevant because 180 is coincidentally the perfect number to one ko something like a blacephalon so the normal or the usual zoro rock lucario lists only have one way to one ko one blacephalon and that is a big issue right because after they have exhausted their dangerous rogue gx they can never ko back to back blacephalons and therefore they are in trouble during the B-String turns and they're in trouble deactivating B-String. Now, however, we do have Zoark and both Lycan Rocks potentially to deactivate that. We have um, Dangerous Rogue, of course, 50 times for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon that will likely eliminate a Blacephalon and then you can prepare for the full bench Kukui Choice Band Devoured Field play to one hit a Blacephalon. And not to mention, uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes is an amazing ability. You get to switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active, so it's a very free turn, essentially. 
at any point you need to. And then Claw Slash is also a pretty nice attack, very decent number with um, for 3 energy 110, and it's a perfect number to KO opposing Zorks. You also have the new Lycan Rock GX 200 HP, it's ability Twilight Eyes, when you play this, hand, this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, so it's energy denial, it combines well with, with its Splinter Charge GX attack, which deals 30 damage for each energy card in your opponent's discard pile, so a really nice combination there. And then we have Accelerock, which deals just slightly more damage than Lycan Rock's um, Claw Slash, the other Lycan Rock's Claw Slash, but 120 is also the magical number to one hit KO a Picarum out of the blue. 1-1 one, one, Alolan Mock, Alolan Mock with its power of alchemy, uh, each basic Pokemon in play in each player's hand and in each player's discard pile has no abilities, therefore no Jirachi for anyone, no Sudowoodo, no Absol as well, but more importantly no Jirachi for the Lightning decks. The Absol I mentioned you increase um, retreat cost for a basic Pokemon, so if you can't get both Grimer and Ditto on turn 1, you can get Absol to try and slow them down. And then we have double tablet lately for consistency purposes. Now, supporters wise, I am very surprised my opponent is committed to the VAR field. They chose Bat Spot with only one Kukui. Instead of two Kukuis, he does have the Plumeria. A very nice way to delay and attack, disrupt an opponent. And Zora towards the late game, it does have a lot of excess cards that it can definitely get rid of um, in order to um, deny an energy drop. Like, energy drops are. The most important part of the game, I feel. Getting the energy drop at the right time on the right Pokemon can be either game winning or game losing if you fail it or you misplay it. So denying an energy drop can sometimes be the game winning move. So I do like the Plumeria, I just don't like it over the second Professor Kukui. Because I do think Blacephalon just runs over this deck if you can't pull the back to back uh, Dangerous Rogue plus um, full on Righteous Beating for 180. Now we do have the four Lily engine with the four Nest Ball, um, three Ultra Ball and three Communication. We have two Cynthia, one, um, one Mallow, three Guzma to target down the right Pokemon, double Acerola to cycle through and heal up our Pokemon, the one Kukui I mentioned, the one Plumeria and the one Judge. And then we have two Divart Fields to increase our damage output. We have one Rainbow, three Fighting Energies and four DC to power up our different Pokemon. And then we have one Rescue Stretcher, one Palpad, and two Choice Bands for Utility. We have also the one Counter Gain to make us able to come back into a match by using Dangerous Rogue for a single fighting. The card is super, super clutch, but I would prefer to have a Field Blower in here, I feel. So very standard Zoroark, very solid, very consistent Zoroark, less options against Pigram, but it does try to compensate uh, that by having the extra defense against Yurachi with the Absol, the extra uh, reliable KO, way to KO with the Lycanroc GX, the, the, what is it, the midday Lycanroc GX, and with the counter gain plus double choice band. Now finally, we're going to take a look at one of the decks that has received the most hype since it's done well and in the past few weeks, which is Zapdos Lycanroc. Zapdos Lycanroc, um, a combination that um, seems to be more common nowadays, um, Zapdos Lucario has also been making the rounds. It is essentially a Zapdos deck, but it does have the added benefit of having Lycanroc. What's Zapdos' worst matchup? Probably Zorak with Alolan Mock. What is Zorak's worst nightmare? It is Lycanroc GX. Yeah, I, as I was just uh, mentioning earlier, 200 HP is very nice. The ability just makes it super, super broken and gets Zapdos an extra way to uh, deny a resource thanks to its ability to choose the right target at the right time. And then we have the Claw Slash attack to deal a one KO on a Zorg and Dangerous Rogue to deal another one, or essentially a KO on anything we might need since Dangerous Rogue can deal so much damage. We also have the Finding Energies to run and the free retreat options as well between Switches and Jirachis to run a Baby Buzzle to surprise someone in the Sledgehammer turn. No Beast Energies or damage output is not as high as it could be, but this also is like the fighting types are essentially a package to counter Pikram as well, whilst, the whilst we have the consistency of Zapdos, so a uh, very nice combination. And the best part about this is that you can use Coco Prism Star's um, Dance of the Ancients to choose your Rock Ruff and then get it powered up for Dangerous Rogue or even Claw Slash in a single turn. 
We of course have the Absol to counter all their Jirachi decks. We have our four Jirachis for the Stellar Wish, and because it's our best starter, we have our three Zapdoses to attack with, and then the one Kogo GX and one Kogo Prism Star. Definitely mainstays of any Lightning deck you could want. For Lily, for Guzma, to Volkner and to Cynthia, I am a big fan of three Volkners and one Urigas. Um, this is what did well. I think I would be making those changes definitely, although. There is more merit to uh, playing Cynthia here, or the extra Cynthias, because you do sometimes need to find the extra pieces, such as the Lycanroc or the Finding Energy, to attack with the Lycanroc. For Nest Balls to search for our basics, to Ultra Balls to help us find the Lycanrocs, and also the Coco GX to drop it from hand. For Electro Power and two Choice Bands to increase our damage output, three switches to escape ropes and two escape boards to make sure that Jirachi is not stuck in the active and we can continually KO combined with Zapdos. And finally, to Rescue Stretcher to make sure that we have enough sub doses and we can recover Lycanroc pieces as needed. 7 Lightning Energy and 3 Fighting Energy round out the deck along with the 2 Green Forest, which allows us to get the right type of energy at the right time. So those are the 4 decks that we will be taking a look at this week. I will be trying to record videos for these decks whenever I get a small chance um, in between all the coaching that I'm doing and in between editing the um the the, the, the invitational um content which is almost ready to go the invitational the table one invitational will be taking place the live stream will be taking place on the 13th and the 14th of april there's no regional there's no there's one special end in guatemala which i don't think many people will attend and there won't be a stream so there should be nothing stopping you from tuning in to twitch.tv slash on those days in order to catch the invitational amongst the top eight or some of the eight best players in the whole world the most creative deck builders the most accomplished players uh this season and in the course of the last few years i'm really looking forward to watching it um i think it's gonna be great i think it's something you guys will enjoy and there's something that has never been done before for uh, Pokemon stream so definitely can't miss it guys I will catch you in our next video yeah, and hopefully I'll be able to have time to live stream one of these um, one of these days this week before Denver but I'll definitely let you guys know on my social media thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you guys tomorrow for some Italian champion action bye bye